you know, everyone wants to play footy, whether it's yeah. rugby, you know, all blacks or Kiwis or anything that you, know, you want to play. Yeah. At 23, 24, you're sort of, you know, really starting to find your, find your feet. And, um, you know, I was playing some consistent footy, playing week in, week out. Yeah. And it gets sort of taken away from you, but, um, All right, kia ora. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Front. My name is Cliff Thompson. Uh, we are here today shooting again for the official podcast of New Zealand Rugby League, and we want to give a shout out to the One NZ Warriors mm. who we partner with in this space in the studio, uh, who allow us to use some of this, um, yeah, this space in, in this amazing time that we have here. So I'm going to throw to my colleague here, uh, the great man himself. Uh, he's going to introduce himself today. Yeah, talofa kia ora. Uh, my name is Ali. Um, yeah, just good to have some convos with. Our athletes and um, hearing their stories, but also you know how they um, have overcome. And um, in saying that, you know how do they find their front through these journeys? So yeah, awesome, bro. So without any further ado, I'm going to um, throw to our special guest today, and we're fortunate enough to have uh, a man that's been a bit, on a bit of a journey as well, um, and that is Te Maori Martin. So T, awesome to have you, brother. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I've seen uh, chances one. The other week, and that was, was pretty cool. He's got a cool story, Chance. Yeah. Good dude. So, um, yeah, I was privileged to come on here, brother. <laughs> yeah, bro. There's there some superstars on here, so. Nah, it's um, all good. Cool. All good. So, uh, yeah, bro, look, again, we want to have a well-being conversation, but part of that will be just, man, you sharing your story. Mm-hmm. And um, with that being said, let's go back to, to the beginning, bro. Who Who is Te Mari? Where is he from? Where is your whanau hail from, your whakapapa? Yep. Um... So um, we're from a little place called Taharo. Um, most most people know that by now. Um, small little place. Uh, everyone knows everyone. It's one of those places where um, you know, everyone's your cousin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's where my dad, dad's from. And my mum's from um, Mangakino. So I was born, ah. in, born in Tukuro. Um, yeah, my mum's from Mangakino. Her side's from down the wide upper yeah. area. So... Um, yeah, I was born in Tokoro and then we moved home um, where my dad's from um, pretty early on in my life. And I was actually when I was um, when I was first born straight away, I was whangaid, so right. whangaid out to um, my mum's sister. So um, I've got two mums. Um, yeah, my mum Leslie was um, who birthed me, and then yep. I've got my mum Susie Rohina that um, if yeah, took me on board and. Wow. When I was little, so, yeah. yeah, that's pretty special. Yeah, that is, bro. Mm. And so, um, how long did you spend at home there, sort of in that region, before coming up to, or before sort of you picked up footy and and moved around a bit? Yeah, so we, um, I lived in Hamilton most of the time right. with, with my mum. Um, I was brought up um, through Kurukaupapa, so yeah, yeah. Um, through the Māori school, um, with the Whakawate, then talking Māpi there in Hamilton, and um, yeah, every mostly every uh, fourth term, I went home to my dad, and that's out to Taro, um to go to school there for the last bit of term, which is which is I, I really enjoyed. I I got to um, you know every Friday, so he worked Monday to Thursday, um, had Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and, and Fridays were our, our hunting days. So yeah, right. yeah, most of the school was Monday to Thursday, and then. Um, the real learning came on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed. I enjoyed my time um, growing up. I had a. I wouldn't say I had a tough life at all. I've, I've right. heard some of the stories that um, yeah. you know some of the boys have had real tough upbringings, and um, I'd say I I had a fairly easy, or nice, comfortable ride growing up. Um, whether whether my parents, my mum, or anything um, had any dramas, um, yep. you wouldn't know about it. You know, they, um, if there was any struggles, you wouldn't know about it. You were always fed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, schooling was no dramas. Right. You always had, always had lunch. So, um, yeah, I had a, I had a pretty, yeah. pretty good upbringing. So, bro, what's your, what was your biggest catch? Um, pig hunting or? Yeah, pig yeah. <laughs> um, um 200? No, no, we didn't get it. We don't really get big pigs out yeah. home. We get um, the smaller pigs with the with the Sort of bigger jaws. So, oh yeah. Um, yeah, one one fifty pounds oh, was probably the biggest one we got. That um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed because um, I was pretty young then, so I didn't have to carry. So yeah. I didn't have to carry it. The old man did, but um, 
yeah, I I definitely um, enjoy hunting a lot. Listen yeah. up, guys. Tomare uh, tours are coming your way, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, this is good. Yeah. <laughs> Start that up. Um, I mean. On there, bro, I think it's important that you highlight it there because – People can sometimes be a bit fucker ma to share their story because we feel like if it's not broken enough, it's not worth telling, right? Mm. Um, but I think just to say, like, testament to you to be able to share that and be honest about, because I, I probably sit in a very similar boat, like, but I think that's also testament to our parents sometimes or that have really tried to ensure that your children are looked after and that they are provided and that not every broken story is the only story worth mm. telling. Yeah, yeah, and that's you, you hear them a lot and it's, um, you know, I can't, yeah, like I said before, I can't say I had a tough upbringing because yeah. um, I was comfortable, I was happy. Um, probably the main thing that I, I do um, really thank my parents for, my mum, both my parents, is I probably played every sport I could. Um, they made sure I played everything I, mm. I, I could, so I got a feel for everything, and um, right. rugby league was actually the last thing I played. Yeah. Um, so on that, let, let's pick that up. So you say you so you must have been obviously a bit of an athlete and like to try a few different sport and all rounder, all rounder type of guy. It, it's so rugby league. You just mentioned come on the scene last. How did you? How did that come along? Um, what was that first experience of Te Māori Mati play, Martin playing rugby league? Um, yeah, it didn't come along till I was sixth form. Um, like I said, I went to Hamilton Boys High, which everyone knows is um, yeah. well known for rugby. Um, I played rugby growing up. I played t ball. I played soccer, touch, um, basketball, um, everything that I can remember. Oh, wow. Just like being in team sports, where um, you know I got along with everyone. Um, love having mates. So my parents, yeah, made sure I was, you know, I was playing on Friday nights, Saturdays, Sundays, every, everything. I was always playing sports and um, played rugby. I really enjoyed rugby. I had my mates um, growing up playing rugby and. I got to sixth form and I, um, I was, yeah, I was enjoying rugby. Mm. I um, and then I just went and played a tournament with some of my mates that I played touch with down in Topol, and um, yeah, it's it just it just happened. I just yeah. Yeah, it sort of just clicked. I, I there was a lot of space, um, and and coming through the rugby, um, pathways, I played. A lot of in the Waikato systems, oh, yeah. um, under 14, 15, 16, and um, you know I was on the fringes of that, and I'd be in the team, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't starting. And you'd pick up real good um, core skills through rugby, yeah, you know, yeah. the passing and that yeah. kind of stuff. So once you got to league, um, it was probably more the mentality that the olden day of you know just bashing it up, and um, it, it just seemed to be a lot more space. It felt like there was a lot of space. So I, I enjoyed it. I, Played all right, got smashed a few times. It was, yeah. you know, it was wasn't the usual legs tackle you're used to. You know, you're getting pumped. But um, yeah, I made a tournament team then, and they they ended up playing the Warriors, uh, like a development team oh, or yeah. something. But I um, I had New Zealand Touch at the same time, and I had to go to Touch. But once I sort of made that um, rep team um, or tournament team, you just saw, yeah, I never looked back after that, and um, yeah, rugby. I ended up keep playing league that year. Yeah, right. And um, went to Kiba Park the, the year after. Yeah, which, yeah, which happened pretty quick. My auntie was working at the school, and um, there was open trial that that came up. And um, yeah, my dad straight away once he heard it, he sent me over. He actually came over with me. Right. And um, yeah, it was all all, all, all sort of happened all, pretty yeah, quick. All, yeah, all pretty happened really quick. And um, you, you know, you hear of Kiba Park from over here. Yeah. See, like, yeah, mean school. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my old man sent me over there. I played the trial and played terrible. <laughs> Had a shocker. Um, it's all lucky that um, Benji Benji went to that school. Yep. And the, the coach that was there at this time um, had coached Benji and I don't know, might have been the same skin colour and yeah, all sure. that kind of stuff, but he reckons he's seen uh, bits of Benji. I mean, I, yep. I remember the first touch I got, I chucked it and I threw the pass. I tried to throw a long pass. They were still playing touch at the time. I tried to throw a long pass and – Went about five meters forward, <laughs> but, um, and then tried to step a few people and stepped and got smashed. And that's all I done. For a forward pass, got done a step and got smashed. And he come off and he goes, "Yeah, we'll sign you up." <laughs> there, there you go, kids. That's the, yeah, that's yeah, the formula. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how that happened. And um, but bro, on there, can I just ask a question? Because um, I remember you coming through 
and I remember hearing about this kid at Kibra um, as well at the time and all the comparisons to Benji, right? And we know the, the freak and the talent that Benji was. And um, Was it ever a, a pressure for you to – like? How did, how did comparisons – how do they sit with you? Oh, it, it, nah, it, 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 there was no pressure at all. I didn't – honestly, I thought they were joking. Because oh, you watch his school highlights and he carved, yeah. and you watch me throwing forward passing and he smashed. I just think I think it came back to being mouldy. I think I've seen the mouldy in them, but um, yeah, it was right. it was just fun, bro. Yeah. Playing with um some bigger Islander boys. Yeah, true. It helps. Hey, oh yeah, you know, it's at school. Yeah, it's the best part, yeah. I got a few tries this passing to one of the boys that he debuted. He, he had a few games, I think, for Bulldogs and might have been Tigers. Lamar oh. Leo Lavavi. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, I, big um, Fijian boy. Yeah, and I got a few. I think that's how I probably got my contract. I'd pass him the ball, and he'd break a few tackles, and everyone thought, "I oh, know, I was putting him in <laughs> holes and that." But really, I was just passing it to him, and he'd do all the damage. So I right. enjoyed. I enjoyed yeah, footy back there. So, so, what is the hype? Is is is, there, is is it is it really the school that kind of you know helps you become a good player, or what are the differences between you know you coming out of Hamilton? As a rugby union, mm. is there a big contrast with, you know, obviously going over, over you know, to Australia and then that's a rugby league school, eh, pretty yep. much. So what do you, is there similarities or what do you reckon? Um, to be honest, it, <clears throat> the um, rugby side in Hamilton Boys, I was, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty you know, we trained a lot, mm-hmm. morning trainings, um, which was long runs and, you know, you got to, you got to train hard to be in the footy team and, um the thing that I think the difference between uh, Hamilton with the rugby and Kira with the league was Hamilton was real strict on if you weren't performing in class, yep. mm. you weren't making the first fifteen or right. in, in the in the system. So you had to you had to be good in class. You had to make your classes. Mm. You, know, you had to come to all the trainings. Where Kira was really focused on just league at the time. It was a right. it was a it was a subject. So. Yeah. And you have your English, maths, right. yeah, okay. league was league an actual subject. subject, yeah. And we'd train, train in that subject. And we'd still have morning trainings there, but it wasn't as strict um, class yeah. classroom-wise. Yeah. And you had to be real um, yeah, mentally tough and, and driven to, to be good in class. You know, yeah. you had to put yourself in classes that sort of challenge you, where um, boys high, you just had to. I mean, yep. Hamilton boys, you had to. and. Mm. It's sort of, yeah, it was a big shock to me because I'd gone from Hamilton Boys High, strict classes, yep. you know, buttoned up, hair off, yep. you know, off your collar and that, and you get to Kibra and it's all different, you know. Yeah, it, was just a, yeah. it was different and I was turning up to all my classes and you know, some of the boys were like, well, what are, you, what are you going to that class for, you know what I mean? Right. We just had to yeah. go for full league. Right. You know, it was a bit more a bit more like that, which um, I, I know it's changed now. They've got a new um, head of the sports department there with um, Peter Norman. Oh, yeah. Who um who has driven it a lot more? Yeah, um, interesting. More, but yeah, at at the time I was, you know, by the by the end of the year, you know, I was only turning up for for the footy right. period, and I would go go to the beach most of the day. And, you know, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't. I'm glad I only spent one year, and it was the last year that I did yeah, yeah, there sure. because um I really did pick up a lot from going to Hamilton Boys so like classroom yeah, right. wise yeah. no, and awesome, dis- discipline wise, so discipline yeah. stuff, eh? yeah. good life sort of stuff that sets you in yeah. good stead. Yeah, mm. and so yeah, you you. Talk, talk to us about that journey now to see at Kibra and then sort of in between that you end up debuting for the Panthers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what happened in that space, bro? Um, well, we were um, feeder to West Tigers. Mm. So we played. I played two years of 20s with West Tigers and my first year was – my first year my coach was Webby. Yep. Yeah. So I I enjoyed that. Um, we made it to some – but it might have been like the quarters or something and – um, played again the year after twenties, and they had some boys there that were unreal. You know, Luke Brooks debuted when he was still 19, yeah, yeah, 18 yeah. or nineteen. Carving, you had Mitch Moses. Yep. that was carving. Teddy, yeah, Teddy was still there. Um, and I was I was enjoying footy, and um, yeah, I just had an opportunity to go to Penrith, and Tigers had, like I said, Luke Luke Brooks and yep. Mitch Moses coming through, and um, Panthers gave me an opportunity to to come to Panthers and. Um, so I went there in 2016. I've done a full um, preseason, which was tough. My first full preseason, and um, come round three, um, there was an injury 
So I think it might have been Wanga Blake or someone. Yeah, and they right. had to move people around. And this is a long, long time ago now. Um, and I, yeah, I got the call up to, mm. you know, day before the game, captain's run. Told I was playing, but this, yeah, this is a long time ago now, 2016. I think Isaiah Yo might have been my center. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Right, true. This is, this is, yeah, that's how, that's how long ago that was. And, um, yeah, made my debut and, yeah, it was all. And so what were the times. nerves? Were you nervous? Were you? It wasn't too bad. I, I didn't get told to the day before. Yeah. So I, I'd even done captain's run. I still wasn't told. You know, I was just falling in. Right. No I was time for that, chucking around. Yeah. And then before you know it, I was playing. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. Just, yeah, it was crazy. I, I, Bit of a blur? Yeah, th- don't remember much of it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I just remember it being the toughest game that I've played. True. Yeah, I was cramping up in my calves. I don't I don't cramp, not much of a cramper, but right. the speed of the game yeah. was a lot different than 20s and, yep. and the couple of games that I played of New South Wales Cup. Yeah, well, bro. So I just, yeah, I enjoyed it. And I think, yeah, was lucky enough. We won that game just. So. Yeah. Lucky enough to be a part of a winning team in, in my debut. Yeah, I mean, bro. And then so fast forward a little bit, you make your way over to the Cowboys, and yeah, um, that's where you, you ended up playing quite a, a bit more. Yeah, first yep. grade, and yep, got to play um, play alongside some some mm. pretty good players, bro. So what was that like? Like you, you talk about JT, yeah, both JTs, you know. I always thought um, it was special to play with, you know, Thurston and yeah. I always said that I um, learned a lot from him and asked him questions, but now I look back at it, I don't think I asked enough. I didn't think I studied right. him an- enough. Enough. I thought I did, but you look back at it now and some of the stuff he done at training, um, you, you just yeah, you can't make up. It's just so. Can I ask on that, like just out of interest, like what's something now that, like, if you had him and you're back out there on the field with him, that you would ask him a nuance of the game, just how he how he could. Um, Seemed to have so much time. Right. He he could he could run slow, but still drag people in from way over here. You know what I mean? He just. Uh, I think one time I asked him how he done this play, and if he had if he done a block, he was picking the the right option nine yeah. time out of ten. Yeah. Right, at training, yeah. and um, he said it had a lot to do with his eyes. You know, locking in eyes with people, and I didn't know what he meant too much by that because when I'd caught the ball, I was just. 100 miles an hour, right. I just thought you have to get Go. to this person, you pass at the back or you pass short. And he'd, he'd manipulate people by looking at looking them in the eyes and right. sort well, of trying to tell, yeah, you know, if, if they're looking away or if he's got, locked them in, he knows he's, you know, they're focusing on him. Mm. And I didn't understand enough. And I didn't ask enough of what he meant by then. Yeah. And I thought I did, but um, yeah, I definitely didn't. I didn't um, you know, make yeah. enough of the opportunity there. No. He's only a DM away, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see him every now and then, but it's yeah, it's, it's still it's it's hard to ask those sort of questions. Yeah, sure. You know, when, when it's like that's that, an awesome but. insight, bro. And I think you know it's insight for people that would never realise because, like you said, you think you play footy, get the ball, hundred miles an hour, you just go mm. and pass it out of some sort of shape. But it's those mm. small things, and I think they're nice parallels to. Even when you think about life, like you know, if we try and navigate some things in life, talking to people, mm. asking, yeah. uh, we don't know how long we have people for, so trying to learn yeah. as much as we can, enjoy as much as we can, be present as much as possible. Um, so you, you spend all this time at the Cowboys, and then obviously um, you face some injury, mm. right? Face an injury where I've, I've had a few injuries now. Nothing, and I've broken my shoulder. Yeah. Um, Obviously broke my leg a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't mind those ones because they're, you know, they're, they're bone. It's, you know, it's freakish. You know, if, if it yeah. happens, it's, you know, it's never, it's, it's, it's an accident. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. You do your hammy a few times and you, and you keep doing it, then it starts, you know, playing, yeah. playing on your mind, and you know, it's a bit um, mentally tough. But um, I mean, I think with the brain bleed, having no um, reason for it. Sure. That was pretty tough. Yeah, you know, I don't mind injuries where, like I said, like you break a leg, you yeah. know why you broke a leg, you pop a bad yeah. angle. But I went to a few specialists, and they weren't they weren't sure on how it happened. So yep. that's you know, as I think I was twenty three, twenty four, not knowing how you get a brain bleed and stuck in your room for a few weeks, that was pretty tough. But in saying that, I had a yeah good team around me, family, yeah. family support. One of my best mates come over and stayed with me for a couple of weeks. 
and it just it made it everything a lot easier yeah. with their help. And um, yeah, and so it wasn't on, as on that, bro, with your with your tough. friend coming over. Was that because you recognised this is a time I need some support, or I think or did they did. just intuitively yeah. know? I think he did. Yeah. Um, I went from you know talking to him every day. I, it's, yeah, I went for a stage there when I played the PlayStation. Yeah, played the PlayStation, and then I played a lot with him, and I didn't play the PlayStation for for a while. Mm-hmm. And he just he knew something was up, so he started messaging away. And he's he's um he's a he's a real genuine nice nice yeah, dude. Yeah, good. And he sort of um, could tell something was up, and he just yeah come come over. Um, awesome. Yeah, crazy. I didn't even think he was working at the time. Yeah, right. So he just come over and. Stayed with me for for a few few weeks, few days, few weeks, and um, yeah, that was cool. Just yeah, yeah. You don't really. It's at at that age, twenty three, twenty four. You know, everyone asks if you're all good. You say yeah. You know, it's not it's yeah. sort of harder to say no. Oh, no, I'm going through something. Yeah. Not that I, I I don't feel like I was. I probably didn't know I was. Yeah. But um, he felt like I was. You know, and yeah. when he when he got there, I was definitely a lot more happier than what I was. Sure. You know? Sitting in a dark room, I was sensitive to light. Yeah, couldn't watch TV or anything. I was getting real bad migraines, so I was yeah. I didn't I didn't think too much of it then, but now looking back at it, yeah, I definitely mm. needed that. But just for him to identify it and having the courage yeah. to come out. Mm. Oh, probably not the courage, but just the you know him being a good friend, mm. you know, just coming over. That, being there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know. And I think he does it a lot. You can tell he's like that. He's a he's just brought up in a nice. Um, Whole family, yeah. they're, they're real nice. The dad, yeah. Danny, he used to be used to be one of our trainers for Touch to come to Boys High, and they've they've got like six or seven kids in the family. Yeah, and now he's running everyone to their sports and going to work himself and providing for the family and everything. And and he's my mate Kalani. He took a lot of um, his values in, and even you know not just with the coming over on my brain bleed, but you know you can have a you'll be having beers or something, and right. you know you're waste, and he's always the one looking after everyone. You know right. what I mean? Especially me, I, I, you know, I used to love love having a drink and getting so wasted that I couldn't even remember stuff. Right, and he's always the one, you know, taking me home. He's just like that, yeah. He's like that, yeah. Parent that you need. Yeah. It's you know, he's always, mm. he's always um, seems like he's calm and and, and yeah. under control, and that's probably why he is one of my best mates. You know yeah, I mean? that's so, cool, bro. Kalani, did you say Kalani? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kalani. Shout out to yeah. all the best friends out there that look after <laughs> their mates, bro. Shout out, yeah, yeah. We need them. Um, chicken, chicken. Good, for, good, yeah, good for. Good for when you're you um got food in the in the pantry. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice to empty the fridge. For yeah, <laughs> yeah bro, we we all got friends like that. Um, but man, so you know, I mean, that's a, obviously a big thing. And I appreciate you sharing it with us, T, because it's some powerful insights. But that brings you home. Was that right? You came yep. home at yep. some point, and if I can ask, was it at that point? Did you ever think? Was footy still a possibility, or nah. was it at that point just look? Yeah. My health is the but most. When we important went thing. to all the specialists and and everything, because because they didn't know how it happened. Yeah, it didn't. Um, did, no one knew the time frame or yeah, um, if it could happen again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, if I got punched in the head and I had a brain bleed, they would just say, you know, don't get punched in the head again. Yeah. But because there was no big whack real to my cause. head or, or no cause for it, it was just it was real grey and that they didn't know and. Yeah, I'd, I I I felt like it was it was unfair on the club, you know, if they if they had to because right. I was coming off contract. Yeah, if they had to sign me up again, not knowing when I could play again, you yeah. know, yeah. I just yeah. I had a good relationship with the club, Peter Parr at the time, Greeny. Yeah, and I had a conversation with them, and I just yeah, I, I felt like it wasn't fair to the club. So, um, mm. yeah, me and my manager made the decision to cool. be able to come home, which was you know I, I was happy to do. I left um, home and I could just start. I was just starting to do stuff myself, you know, sixteen, and you know, being able to go pig hunting by yourself, you know, be able to do everything by yourself. And I never got to do that as much. You know, I'd come back on the holidays and be able to do it, but I never got to have my own dogs, yeah, you know, all that yeah, kind of stuff yeah, that yeah. I was looking forward to. So, you know, where one door closes, another one opens, and I got nice. to come home and start up my own pack, and that's what kept me um, positive yeah. and, and going. Is that um, you know. I got to hunt all the time. I was you had some other interests outside of yeah, footy, eh? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, my, my older brothers, they they done everything. So, um, you know, I was always the worst at everything. So, you know, <laughs> surfing, I was hopeless at surfing. So I got to get back into surfing and try and do that and hunting, terrible yeah. at that. And got to start up my own dogs. Fishing, still suck at that. But, um, 
everything yes everything I'm a big big believer in everything happens for a reason sure and I feel like you know that was my reason and at the time you know being 23 24 um I thought you know not playing footy again was was going was yeah. really tough it was you know everyone wants to play footy whether it's yeah. rugby you know all blacks or kiwis or anything you, know, you want to play yeah. at 23 24 you're sort of you know really starting to find your find your feet and um, and I was playing some consistent footy, playing week in, week out. Yeah. And it gets sort of taken away from you. But, um, you know, like I said, one door closes, another one opens. Yeah, and yeah. Got to come home and um, do the other things that I love. You know yeah. what I mean, bro? And so you're home and you're at somewhat at peace with footy ending and yep. you're doing all these other things now. Um, but then it, it somehow comes back on the radar, like your health improves. And mm. so talk us through that, man. Um. Yeah, it was just step by step. When I first came back um, surfing and stuff, I'd I'd fall off, and you know I was getting headaches from that, and I'd have to stay out for a week. You know, I kept getting yeah. them day yeah. after day, and I was thinking, "Geez, I'm not, I can't be doing, I can't do anything." Pig hunting was alright because you're just walking around. You're not, well, hopefully, you're not falling over and hitting your head on anything. Um, but yeah, that was it was slow, real slow. And um, the boys started up a league team again, Tarot Steelers. So um, you know, I was getting down to training and, and helping them out where I could. And um, that was um, so the brain bleed happened start of twenty nineteen. That was twenty twenty. I went down and helped them and sort of just helped them out. And then COVID happened, so they had no team. And then um, that that whole year happens, and then got to twenty twenty one, and I was going to do the same sort of thing. Yeah. And I started helping out again, and um, it's being such a small place, and we had to get numbers from everywhere. There was about four or five at training. Yeah. I had to fall into to make a number and. Um, we started doing like a little bit of tackling stuff and I, and I made some tackles and I felt sweet and then carried on going yep. and week after week, keep going. Yeah. And by the time the season come around, I thought I'll oh, try and have a game. Yeah, yeah. Had a game and played a few more games and it was sweet. You know, I was still, I was playing against, you know, some of the teams like Tony Fado and they had yeah, yeah. Wadangi playing. Yeah, yeah. That's how I'll get taken up by Wadangi and <laughs> everything was sweet. So this is, you know, two and a bit years later. Yeah. And, um, yeah, everything was good, and I just thought, "Geez, I can, I can get back into this." So we played the rest of the season. I played a, played a game for Waikato, um, in the five tries there, <laughs> five drop balls. I was still <laughs> five forward passes, still doing the same thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, you and, make it, kids. And that yeah. was on, um, that was on TV, and um, I was lucky enough to reach a few people. And yeah, yeah. The week later, yeah, my my manager rang up, so. Yeah, that's how that happened. Yeah. Got a few scans, uh, make sure it was all good all again, good. and um, yeah, went to Bronx. Yeah, and so you, you you go to the Bronx, and how long were you there for? Bronx? Just the one year. Just the one year. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and obviously, off the back of that, opened up a whole lot of other opportunities. And mm. we'll talk in a moment about coming back to the Warriors and, and that. Um, but if we just in that moment sort of cycle there or ruminate there for a moment and talk about putting on the black jersey. Playing for the Kiwis, right? Um, being selected to to be part of the team, like, um, but what was that like? Um, what the last yeah, year, or just it, just being when I, when I did play Kiwis? Yeah, yeah, when you did play Kiwis, being selected for the first time, all of that, like your whole experience. What did that mean to you? Yeah, that was huge. That was um, I got chosen um to go to the Four Nations. They always take a young fella, or yeah. they used to always take a young fella to go along and sort of. Um, learn from everyone and uh, 2016 the year I debuted um, yeah I, I played about eight or nine games and then um, broke my shoulder yeah and I came back for the last two games of the season um, just playing cup for the last two games and then I get a phone call from Kitty saying um, if I was free to come to Four Nations am I mm. keen to go and I said yes yeah, sweet yeah. and I, I thought he was joking and um, yeah, sure enough, the team name team must come out, yep. and yeah, I was in there, and yeah, I was, yeah, it was crazy, just rubbing shoulders with you know people like that. Yeah, um, it was it was special to just go along, and yeah, now was at the same time. I think it was you know, the boys that were coming through then was Fisher Harris, yep. you know, um, Tarpany was the yeah, same yeah. debut uh, debut number for me, and um, you see where they are now. It's, it's it was special, yeah. man. It was it was definitely really special. My parents come over. Um, yeah, just, to, just yeah. to see that. And I got to jump on in the last few minutes against Scotland, I think. 
so to wear the jersey was yeah was something special. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. And um, so we talk about moments where because because it seems like bro, obviously as we talk more and sort of gotten to know you a little bit, um, you're a guy that's just happy to you know as opportunities come up mm-hmm. and you're you know sort of play what's in front of you and um, you come back to the Warriors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what does it mean to because I think obviously the tie there with with Webby, which is a nice link. Mm. Um, but you play for the Broncos, and it obviously opens some doors to come back home. Mm. Um, what has that been like for you? And what does that mean to you to to be back here at the Waz and and to be to be home playing rugby yeah, league? Being home special. It's, mm. um, it's a lot easier um, off the field, you know, being able to just drive three hours down the road. It does it sounds like a bit, but. Um, three hours down the road, and I can be hunting. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and and I'm I've caught up on all of the all the hunting on YouTube. I can when I was living in Oz. You know, I'd go home and there was no. You know, I was surfing when I could. Yeah, me and the missus would go down there. But yeah, here there's just a lot more stuff to do for me. I, f- I find you got to have that balance of um, mm. footy and away from away from footy. And my balance away from footy is hunting. Yeah. Hunting or surfing or doing something outdoors, diving or fishing, and um, that's why three hour drive is it's nothing yeah. really. I get up at any time to go and do that, and yeah. it just I come back a lot more fresh and um, less drained when I, yes. when I when I do it. You know, you get away. Some of those things, yeah, yeah, just doing that. It just you get away from footy, and when you're when you're doing so much footy and you're just focused on footy, it, it can be draining. Yeah, it, it can be really draining and. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. You got to have that balance of on the field yep. and off the field. And stuff and, off it. Yeah, and it's 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 a good time actually at the moment too because um, me and my partner found out she was pregnant. Mm. There's a time I was negotiating with where I was going to go. Oh right. And yeah, she, her family's from here, um, to Kofata, and my family's obviously from yeah. here. We're just having that family support helps yeah. with having a little one, having our first first little girl. So that was that was a big reason on coming home as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's that's that's yep taking up a bit of time. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so even on that, like you, you know, you talk about being a father now. Mm. Um, how do you reckon you're doing, bro? Balancing being a dad, a professional athlete, um, having to deal with injury as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's it it go. <laughs> you hear people say it goes fast. It yep. does go fast. Yeah. It's trying to balance um, footy. Being a dad and hunting is the, <laughs> you know, hunting. Is the bit, yeah. You got to try and, yeah, try and fit all that in. And, mm. um, yeah, I got a, I'm lucky enough that I got a partner that's pretty cruisy. She's, she's a, yeah, cruisy Kiwi chicken. Um, she's pretty, she's pretty easy on me, you know, doing that kind of stuff. She kind of understands the balance of where mm. it needs to be. You know, she can say no sometimes, but she's pretty, She's pretty um, supportive. supportive on, you know, what you need to do outside of footy as well. Yep. She's seen me probably when I was <clears throat> um, probably stuck in Brizzy a bit and being indoors yeah. all the time, how bloody crazy I'd go. So I think she it works out better for everyone when I come back happy and, <laughs> yeah. you know, bouncing yeah. around the place that um, I do get away. But um, in saying that, you got to get the balance right. You can't you know, if baby's going through yeah. something, not sleeping or something, you can't yeah. just go cruise off, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You go and have fun while she's stuck at home because mm. it's pretty tough, man, for the for the mums out there, eh? Yeah. Um, seeing the whole nine months go <clears> through, <throat> you know, they're going through that and waking up in the middle of the night spewing yeah. and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then the birthing part itself is. Yeah, yeah. yeah Eye opening, eh? Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, you get a lot of, um, a lot of respect for all the mums out yeah. there, you know, yeah, that do it. Right. It's. Yeah, it's yeah. Gnarly, you're one of those guys that can hear them crying, and you're like, mm. "Nah, yeah, no, I am." Yeah, <laughs> I do the old, especially the because she's just she's fed on the boob, yeah, not the bottle, yeah, yeah, too so much. You know, it's not much I can do, bro. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not much I can do, but yeah, just stay out of the way and go back yeah. to sleep. Just another question, like I know you know you played obviously North Queensland, Penrith, but does yeah added pressure playing for the Warriors? You know, it's the only team in New Zealand. Um, I could. I could say on here that um, sometimes, you know, you, you, you're playing against the ref too, you know, and some of the cause. <laughs> um, that was probably the first question. And how hard is it to travel you know, as a player and going over there and playing? 
Yeah, the, um, well, we, yeah, we do a lot of travelling. And I think the, the good part about it um, is how Webby gets the families involved in a lot of things, you know, mm. trying to get them to feel a part of the club you know, mm. not feel them, make them feel like they're separated. Yeah. Knowing, um, knowing our schedule, when we're going, you know, months in, in advance, yeah. um, trying to get them along to, you know, team team things and bringing your whole family along. And that's, yeah, I don't know, yeah, it, it does mean a lot because they feel involved and, yeah. you know, they're not separated. And um, he just, he's done a real good job on, you know, when someone debuts, you know, bringing their family in and yeah. making them feel welcome. He's, he, he can... He's one of those people that can talk to everyone, you know, mm. no matter who it is. He's got the same respect, you know, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. He talks to um, me the same way he'd talk to anyone yeah. else, you know, someone on the street, you know what I mean? Yep. And that's what, that's a good trait that Webby has is being able to talk to everyone and, really and make everyone way. feel involved. And it's not just a hello, how you been? You know, it's 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 all more in depth yeah. and mm. you know, have a genuine conversation with you. Yeah, and awesome. Not just myself, but partners and, you know, everyone. So um, it's it's – it's really good having that, having the family support, you know, mm. being travelling all the time. That that helps because we travel a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, f- the first couple of rounds, I think we only had yeah. two games, two home games and seven in yeah. rounds or something, six rounds or something. Well, how, how hard is it, like, travelling sometimes, you know, um, you know, the day before, mm. playing over there? Because I know viewers and people that – fans that see it, they, they just think, oh, man, you're going over. Like you're away. We, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, first class – <laughs> you know, sitting there, you know, and it's easy. Mm. But I know that mentally, it's it, it is draining, yeah. physically. Yeah. Um, so you know, look, not like the boys in Aussie, which is they got their own challenges, but they just they wake up in their own kind of surroundings, and they turn up and they do the same routine. Which you guys, you travel, eh? It's, yeah. It is a bit of a kind of uh, a barrier too. I, I yeah, guess. 100%. yeah, hundred percent. First of all, we don't we don't fly first class. Yeah. <laughs> We're in straight. the normal seats like everyone else, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely, it definitely does. You got to balance it out, and that's what the trainers do well. Yeah. Um, Webby gets a good sense of how the boys are feeling. Um, whether he might just you might chuck in a day off because yep. you know everyone's fatigued, and that you want to call it jet lag, but yeah. you almost feel like that, you know, yeah. just traveling yeah. and. Sometimes we'll go two days before. Sometimes we'll go a day before. It just yeah. depends on the schedule and like this. This couple of weeks we're playing three games and yeah, it's tough. Eleven, yeah, days, 11 or days, days, yeah, days, eleven days, and you know, traveling away, coming back, traveling away again. It's just yeah, like you said, probably people only see you know you just turn up on the field and yeah. you play. But yeah, traveling does definitely does take um, a toll. Take a toll. Mm. And yeah, yeah. And saying that we get we get um, you know fed well, yeah. you know you get into a you get into a good um, routine, and um, I, th- I think my observation is that the club does a really good job of trying to control the things that you can control. Yeah, a, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's and that's all you can ask for is yeah. getting that help around that, and the club do a very good job on that. Yeah. So um, yeah, as tough as it, as it is, yeah, um, we got to deal with it, and, and it's there's no excuses for it. it you know, it is, it is what it is, and. It, you're sitting, sitting down for three hours. You look at it that way. You get to yeah, rest your legs yeah. for three hours. Or yeah. You know, yeah. No, but um, awesome. yeah. I suppose you get you get the modern day technology. You got mm. FaceTime and all that kind of stuff. So, mm. um, so it's, yeah, it's all good. Still get to hunt. Yes, yeah, still get to hunt. And that's yeah. probably the that's probably the bit where you got to see is that when you do go two days before you play the say say you leave on the Thursday, yeah. you're there for the Friday. Train on the Friday. You play on the Saturday. You come back on the Sunday. That's your where if you're playing in Sydney and you're a Sydney team, you, you play on the Saturday, you go home on the Saturday, yeah. Your Sunday, all of Sunday's off, you get to do your own recovery, you know what I mean? <clears throat> For us it'll be play on the Saturday, you fly back on the Sunday, and then you you gotta come in on the Monday, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of that's where it sort of gets tough on the family. You're right. you're away quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. But um yeah, like I said, Webby's got an M on board on yeah. feeling uh, a part of the team and that's all we can ask for no, really, because eh? awesome. we have to travel. It's good, bro. Play. Can't um, meet them halfway and play on the ocean. No, something. yeah, are <laughs> they for sure? And I think that's a nice segue into probably the last question I have for you, bro. In this time that we've got together, is um, and you talked a lot about it already, T, um, about what keeps you sort of well outside the game. But if we can bring it home, 
if you were to say two or three things, or one or two things even, that you do, that you have in your life or that you find helpful that have kept you well, that keep you well now, we, we frame it up as finding your front. Um, but yeah, what, what are those things, Te Māori, that help what keep you well? Things? What keeps me well? Um, for me, I'd say um, family. Um, having family around is huge, yep. huge for me. Um, having my partner and, and my little girl around. And, um, yeah, the other one is just, like I said before, being outdoors yeah. whenever I can. Um, having something outside of footy and... Yeah, having something outside of footy. And for, for other people, it's different, you know. Mm. Some, some might like studying or, or yeah. something like that. For me, yeah. it's that's what I want to do after footy is down the lines of something outdoory. You know? yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm sussing out with Jerry at the moment. Oh, yeah. He's trying to suss out what I what I would like to do outside of footy because it's not too far away, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. You know, if anyone knows how quick um, yeah. it can be taken away, it's, it's me, you know, it's having you. the brain bleeding in. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I've gotten to really appreciate coming back and, and yeah. being in a team environment and, and being around the boys yeah. and, and playing you know, rugby league being on TV, you know, all that kind of stuff that yeah. you just take for granted when you're playing it. It's not till it gets taken away you really appreciate yeah. um, how special it is. So being home special, playing footy special, but, um, yeah, definitely family, being having family around, mm. that's, that's, nice. that's, that is really special. Nice, bro. Yeah. Ali, any final thoughts? Uh, thank you, T, for coming on, man. Um, hearing your story, your comeback, oh, it's amazing. I'm sure there's... Some players out there, you know, that are uh, aspiring to be rugby league players that are, you know, be inspired by your story. But also one of the things that I kind of, um, picked, you know, took out was ask questions, eh? You know, when you, if you're playing halfback, you know, ask the, the senior guy in front of you um, questions and, you know, mm-hmm. I think anything to grow. So, yeah, mm-hmm. nah, wishing you all the best for the next part of your season or whatever and all the best with the recovery too. So, yeah. I think the other cool thing um, – Around here is, is um, having you see a lot of old boys around. Mm-hmm. You know yourself, Jerry Monts. Seen um, Logs in here the other yeah. day. You know that just good, you no know, genuine conversation. You know you have a yep. good yarn yeah. with, with with everyone. And um, yeah, just it's it's good to you know just be able to talk to to people. Yeah. You know whether it's, it's old school, new school, yep. whatever it is. You know mm-hmm. you see a lot of lot of faces around and. Um, yeah, being able to watch some of the old school stuff, you yep. know, yourself and you know people like Jerry and Monson, yeah. they're playing that, you know, they're around, yeah. and they're helping out. It's it's it's, it's, it's cool. It's special. It's, yeah, it is special, you know. Yeah, you know, just being, you know, seeing you fellows on the field, how you play, you know, hard and tough, and then you, you have a conversation with you, and it's just, you know, you can't. <laughs> it's all different, you know. It's all. Um, it's all jokes. Yeah, yeah, it's all nice <laughs> and nice and um, genuine conversations, and yeah. there's a thing that. Um, you know, I I seem to have found watching because I, I I do like watching games you now when I can, and sort of study other teams and you sort of can't can't judge people um, or players um, due to what they do on the field. Yeah. You know what I mean, you can't yeah. judge. You know, that's the old saying: you can't yeah. judge a book by its cover. Because yeah. you know, you get some players that are on the field, you know, they look like you know they're all rugged and they always yeah. push shuffling, and you know they you have a conversation with them. Outside of the game and or off the field, and they're just the nicest, you know, nicest people to ever walk this earth. You're talking about Monty. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually talking about Barnes. <laughs> you see Barnes on the field, and you're like, "Geez, you know, yeah, you, look at this fella." But then you, yeah. you talk to you know Mitch Barnett, yeah. and he's just the nicest nice dude. Guy. And yeah. yeah, I think you know Dallin's another one. Yep. I used to hate playing against Dallin. <laughs> you know, he's always pushing and yeah. shoving, and they're the ones that you want in your team. You know, they're the yeah. competitors. They're the ones that. They want to do everything to to win the game, and um, yeah, it's just, it's 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 nice. good to be around. You now I've been to a few different clubs now, and um, I'm enjoying playing against all of them because you know how yeah. how it is now. You know how people are, and um, I'm I'm glad to say that I I don't know I haven't been to a club where I haven't liked someone. Yeah. You know? So yeah. everyone's um, just as awesome, yeah, just as special yeah. as, as, yeah. as everyone. You know, no, they're all genuine cool. and. What you see on the field isn't always what they are like yeah. off the field. Hundred nice. percent, bro. Appreciate you saying that. And um, look, man, my final thing is just really appreciate your time, appreciate your insights, appreciate you coming on. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, bro, I think I really sort of what like Ali was saying. I really do appreciate actually that 
you get the sense when you talk to you and because of what you've been through, mm. like I think you really – I see you, your interactions with people. You just talk about it now talking to people. You really do carry this thing that every day is a bit of a gift, right, mm. and that – you, you don't want to take it for granted because uh, it can be taken away so quick. Yes. Yeah. I think uh, um, if anything I take away from our conversation today is the reminder of that, mm. like just yeah. um, you know being grateful for the opportunities, being grateful for what we can do, for who we have around us. Mm. And, um, bro, that, that comes through uh, in, in measures through what you've said today. So really appreciate you, man. Appreciate your time. And, um, you know, I hope in some way for those watching that this can help people find their front as well. Yeah. Hunt and find your front. <laughs> <laughs>